Good morning, Chair Postman and Board Member Garrett and staff. The lobby is open and the recording has begun. Thank you, Dustin. Good morning, everybody. We will convene the Liquor and Cannabis Board Caucus meeting for Tuesday, April 12th, 2022. Uh, our first item is approval of the March 29th uh, Board Caucus minutes. Is there a motion to approve? I move approval of the March 29th Board Caucus minutes. Great. I'll second, and and those are approved. And just to note, that was the um, uh, roundtable on uh, uh, retail cannabis uh, safety, and uh, the minutes will be posted later today. If anybody uh, wants to go back and uh, reread any part of that, uh, it it I looked at it this morning as I was going through the minutes to approve, and uh, it's great conversations. So take a look. Um, our next item is board meeting prep and rules update, and uh, we will turn over to Kathy Hoffman, the policy and rules manager. Good morning. Good morning, Chair Postman and board member Garrett. Um, I'll go ahead and start with a brief rules update and then move into the CR 102 package that will be presented at the board meeting tomorrow. So starting with our alcohol rules, um, with respect to the rule project concerning axe throwing, um, public hearing uh, is scheduled for April 27th. We've received a handful of comments, I want to say three or four perhaps, um, in support of that proposal so far. Um, under that timeline, the CR 103 would still be presented to you on, uh, on or about May 25th. So that project remains um, on schedule and good to go forward. Okay, quick question on that. Sure. The, th the three comments, that's it in total so far? I believe, Audrey, uh, if I may, Audrey, how many total comments have we received so far? And I want to say it's been about three, but I I might be mistaken. Hi, Kathy. Yeah, I believe you're correct, and I can double check that. But I believe okay, it's no, that's good. Okay. Thank you. Just, just a handful of comments on that. Okay, thanks. Uh, of course, and then the next project that we've just recently opened is to implement Senate Bill 5940. That has to do with... Uh, a contract packaging services endorsement. Uh, we had our first uh, project team kickoff meeting yesterday, um, kind of scoping the, the rural project and talking about how we might implement that legislation. So uh, uh, more, to, more to happen there, but at this point it looks like the CR 101 will be prepared to be presented to you um, on April 22nd, 27th, excuse me, so the next board meeting. So we're moving along with that project nicely. Uh, next project is just general rulemaking and that has to do with the electronic service project. Uh, we do have draft conceptual rules that were shared with the public yesterday for comment. Um, because they're general in nature uh, and we don't see them as being very controversial at all, uh, we're using the approach of just sharing the draft conceptual rules over um, our web delivery service and inviting people to comment um, on those rules to our rules inbox. And we've done that with a couple of other projects before that were relatively non-controversial. Um, uh, and these, these we do believe will benefit um, both our, our regulated community and others who engage with the agency as well as the agency itself. Um, so the comment period for that, I believe, ends on the 25th of this month, and then we can move towards a CR 102 that we anticipate will be filed on uh, May 11th. All right, questions on those before we move into the cannabis rule projects? No, just online on the electronic service. We've talked about it before. I know it's not one of our more exciting things, and, no. and I think uh, <laughs> sending it out for written comments is totally appropriate. I would just encourage Anybody interested to take a look because it I, I agree it it will help the just smooth running uh, uh, kind of adjudication and other parts of of what the LCB does every day the kind of uh, back shop operations and um, so yeah uh, I appreciate the work uh, the staffs put into that and um, encourage uh, people to take a look thanks. All right, uh, so moving into cannabis rules uh, um, in progress. Um, as you know, Jeff filed the, with your approval this year, 102 for um, adjusting, making the technical adjustments to um, 314.55.108. That has to do with pesticide um, action levels and aligning that particular rule section with 
uh, the quality control rule updates that we just recently made. Um, that is scheduled for hearing on um, May 11th uh, as well. And under that timeline, the earliest we could bring the CR 103 for your approval would be May 25th. So uh, I, I think there have been one or two comments received, mostly in the form of questions about what the rules might do. I'm just not here to provide uh, details on that, but uh, very little feedback on that rule set at this point. Um, and then Jeff is also working on implementing House Bill 1210, and that's the piece of legislation that changed the word marijuana to cannabis and statute. We're updating all of our rules to reflect that change. And it's not just isolated to our cannabis rules, but there are other rules throughout the entire section 314 um, that need to be updated. So Jeff plans on bringing the CR 105, so that's a different rulemaking process. It's called expedited rulemaking um, that because it's mandated that we engage in that process, we're doing it. Um, so that means that there won't be a public hearing on the rule, on the rule proposal, and that we move to a one or three um, after 45 days after the 105 and its content have been published on the Washington State Register. So it's a way for it. <laughs> Yeah, it's a different... I didn't know there was a 105. I I, I was still, I, my first frustration was 101, 102, and 103 <laughs> before something could be done. And I didn't know we could jump to a 105. And, oh, sorry. But then you go it's back okay. to a 103 as I get it. Right? <laughs> right. So... But wait, there's more. Yeah, there's one more process. <laughs> <laughs> um, just this is a process that was written into the legislation that moves, you know, industrial hems into what it is right now. Um, so yeah, so it's a, it's available to us, and we're using it as mandated by uh, twelve ten House Bill twelve ten. So um, that should be on your agenda at the next board, or not the board meeting tomorrow, but the next board meeting. Right. If we okay. run into any delays, we'll let you, let you know on that. Um, and then, really, I guess this is kind of, we can talk about what I'll be presenting to you in the board meeting tomorrow, and that's the CR 102, uh, asking for your approval to file it, to um, uh, uh, accept our, our proposal for draft, our, our, let me back up here, I apologize. <laughs> Asking for your approval to file a CR 102 to put rule, uh, our rule proposal uh, forward for social equity rules. And so these, uh, and I'm sorry if it took me a while to get there. Um, we, I really am excited to bring this rule package to you tomorrow for a number of reasons, um, notwithstanding that, that we do have a proposal that puts our social equity program into rule and that aligns with the recommendations of the social equity task force. Um, it also amends uh, uh, several licensing rules to align with the language that we're introducing in the social equity program. And then also make the rules, I think, um, easier for people to read, to understand, and to understand our licensing process. Uh, we did some reorganization in our licensing rules on the cannabis side so that they flow a little more smoothly um, and some of the language aligns up and we're shifting away from language that sounds it's it's legalese if we're being you know clear um, moving away from that kind of language so that that folks who read the rules folks to whom the rules apply can understand what they say so we're excited about this proposal. The other thing that I wanted to share was the CR 102 memo itself and the changes that that reflects in the way that the agency thinks about rulemaking and policy development. Um, you'll note in the 102 pack or in the 102 memo that uh, we did a complete DEIB, so that's diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging analysis. That's something to look forward to in all of our rule packages certainly been a lens that we do our policy development through and it has been for the last year, over a year, I should say. The other thing that I have to bring your attention to, and I know I've done that with you individually, is the comparison table um, in the package. 
that lays out the social equity program rule, how it aligns with the recommendation of the social equity task force, and in some instances, actually mirrors the language that was offered to us, and how it aligns with that recommendation and the statutory authority to go along with it. So those um, those really are the high points of the, the rule package. Um, let me check my notes to see if there's anything that I forgot. There isn't. So can I answer any questions on this? No, I'm uh, excited with you that we're moving forward and moving along with that, those rules. Uh, the listen and learn, you had a huge turnout. And I know that you did make some changes and within things based on recommendations. So great work. Thank you. And, you know, I'm glad you brought that up, uh, Board Member Garrett. Um, we did incorporate, <clears throat> pardon me, the scoring rubric in the rule. Uh, and we also made a couple of changes to some definitions that were uh, suggested by participants in the listen and learn session. So we were we were grateful for the feedback we received. And, and I also want to say we were grateful for all the ways that feedback was received. Uh, we heard feedback in the form of narrative, uh, story, um, sharing experiences, and that that all is important to us. Um, and we listened to it and we memorialized it in the rope package as well. So everyone was heard and we were thankful that they felt comfortable sharing with us. And we continue to look forward to doing that good work. So thank you. Yeah, I'll just... Uh... Ed, my thanks to you and your team, uh, and also thanks to Member Garrett, whose leadership on the task force and within the agency just helped us and hugely to get to this point. And, you know, the, that comparison you were talking about was something that I was particularly pleased to see because I think it really shows how aligned the LCB is with uh, the task force. Now, you know, not 100%. And we've talked about the rubric, and we could talk more about it tomorrow. But um, yeah, and I, we wouldn't be there if it weren't for uh, Member Garrett's um, sort of parallel roles on the task force and on this board. And so I, I think we really benefited uh, from from her knowledge and, and commitment there. So absolutely. And if I may, one more thing, just also shout out to our licensing division and yeah. Becky Smith's leadership. Yep. Um, yeah has really, 100%. really helped this um, project along and I've greatly appreciated it. Greatly appreciated everyone, but so uh, yeah, there's been some excellent yeah. work there. And we'll talk a little more about that tomorrow, but and we have mentioned in the past, but when you look at the really the turnaround that licensing led in our um, collaboration with the task force and the legislature has really been one of the remarkable things that's happened uh, in in just this last year, you know. Um, and uh, as Member Garrett reminds us, we brought that legislation uh, to the legislature initially. Yeah. Um, and I think that uh, the staff stepped up uh, here in uh, uh, this year. Um, what was that two years after the initial one um, to, to really get it to this point? So um, and, you know, we will have to acknowledge that even though I think we're all really pleased and excited about what's happening, we also know it's the beginning of a lot of work to be done. The vote tomorrow is not completion of that. It's opening the door for, you know, a lot of lot more hard work and, and actually trying to find locations and all that. So, but I won't rain on that parade yet. We'll be thankful today yes. uh, and conserve uh, some energy for the future. Yes. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, I'm drained. <laughs> oh, I bet. I bet. Can't give up yet. <laughs> anyway, that concludes my, uh, my sharing for today. Um, Great. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you thank tomorrow you. for the board meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and that takes us to our last item, which is board member and executive assistant reports. Anything uh, more, Member Garrett? No, uh, I uh, 
had a great conversation with our uh, incoming board member and um, looking forward. I'm just looking yeah. forward to having him join us. Yeah, yeah I, I chatted with him again too, Jim Vollendroff, just he's, he's studying so hard. <laughs> he, right. uh, yeah. Um, it's really exciting. So uh, yeah, just a um, couple weeks and, and uh, he'll be with us. Yeah. So yeah, good. Um, the only thing I'll note is uh, uh, tomorrow's board meeting. We got a lot on the agenda, uh, including uh, going to spend some time updating everybody on uh, uh, cannabis retail uh, and other uh, safety uh, issues. There's been a lot going on since our roundtable on the 29th. Um, and we will have uh, uh, division heads here at the LCB give you some detailed reports tomorrow as part of the board meeting. Um, later uh, this morning, there's going to be a, a licensees only meeting with law enforcement to talk about best practices. Um, excited to see uh, what comes out of that. There's work going on in all of the different uh, uh, pieces of this that we discussed on the 29th. Um, cashless systems, uh, federal legislation, uh, uh, state legislation that could help uh, uh, retailers uh, and others who are making investments, all sorts of things. So um, I'm looking forward to, to tomorrow for that uh, update from everybody. And then as uh, Kathy Hoffman was just pointing out, we are going to approve the uh, CR 102 for social equity, which is is a big deal uh, and look forward to that as well. Yeah. So we uh, also I forgot to mention Becky and I did um a presentation last week with uh, Seattle City Council members oh. and brought them up to speed on where we are with the social equity and, you know, how we got to where we are. We kind of gave them a full overview. Um, they were having a discussion around that and trying to figure out if there's anything this, uh, the city itself can be doing and working on. So we, uh, they wanted to hear where we are and how we got to where we are. So we presented to them uh, last week in one of their council meetings. That's great. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I, I, uh, I'm sure there's a lot you all have learned <laughs> through this process that-, that uh, And still learning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. it's a heavy lift. But I think it's good when other municipalities are taking the time to bring us in yeah. and to know what it is we are doing, how we got to what we're where we're doing, because they are all hearing things also. So sure. it's good that they uh, I thought it was great that they did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's terrific. I, I kind of hope others do it as well. That'd be nice to to see that kind of sharing going on. So yeah. terrific. OK. Uh, Dustin, anything to report from your desk? Uh, nothing for the good of the order. Thank you, Chair. Great. OK, well, with that, then we will adjourn and uh, we'll be back uh, tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. for the, the board meeting. And that will adjourn the caucus meeting for April 12th, 2022. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.